Hey there, my name is Jay Gordon. I'm an Azure Cloud Advocate. One of the things I really love doing is showing people how to get started using all the different tools within Azure. One of the things that you can do that makes your life really, really simple is creating CI, CD, that's continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines without having to know all the YAML, the ins and outs. We're gonna learn that today. I'm gonna to show you how to deploy an application I think what we'll do during the process is maybe break something, redeploy it, and do it all through triggers in Azure DevOps. So we'll make a mistake, we'll fix it, we'll do all of our deployment, and I think you're gonna learn some great stuff. So sit back, let's go ahead and get started deploying an application. What we're gonna be doing is building a basic uh, stateless application. It is a clock, it is built in React, uh, and Node, uh, so you can just see, very, very simple, uh, Node.js, React, Babel, Webpack, SCSS, and Bootstrap 4. So really uh, basic stuff that we're gonna use to uh, build an application with. Uh, and we're gonna deploy this application to an Azure app service. And an Azure app service is a fully hosted uh, way of accessing your applications without having to do all the overhead to build it. So we need to start by creating a resource group. So to start creating a resource group, we can just go to that resources section in the uh, Azure portal and click web app. So we'll use my uh, regular subscription. We'll create a new group. We're just gonna call it Jay's Clock, okay? We're gonna then give our app a name. We'll just call it Jay's Clock. It's a fully qualified domain name. We're gonna get HTTPS available. So we're gonna run code. We're not gonna use a Docker container. We can uh, build our own image and serve it, but we're not going to today. We're gonna to use the Node 12 LTS runtime, and that's gonna go ahead and pick an actual uh, image for us of Linux with Node LTS on it as our base. Uh, we'll pick where we wanna host it. I'll pick East US. Monitoring. We want to enable the application insights so we can get better information about what our application is doing. Tags, we're going to go ahead, name, clock, and then we'll put environment, and we'll call it production. Sounds good? Cool. So now we click review and create, <clears throat> and our web app. We'll start building. Uh, one part I skipped, let me go back, is our app service plan. Our app service plan is actually the hardware uh, that we're going to build on top of. And that is uh, a separate portion of this setup. So what we can do is just go ahead and create one. We're gonna use a new one. And we're gonna just call it J clock app, okay? So we have the options of the SKU, um, essentially the type of hardware we want to use. Uh, we've got dev test, production, isolated. We said this is a production application. We're going to use this P1 V2, it's less than 75 bucks a month. We'll click apply. We already did our monitoring selection. Yes. Um, let's tag that again. My mistake. Name. Clock environment production cool so review and create <clears throat> so here's all the information that we're setting up we're creating a resource group uh, and an application named Jay's clock we're going to be using code to publish we're not going to be using a docker container node LTS uh, we've given it tags our app service plan is going to have this kind of hardware in it we can scale, modify, do what we need. We can download the template so we can keep it and rerun this in the future if we want to uh, iterate, do another version. So we'll go ahead and we'll click create. And now the deployment process is going to start. So what it'll do <clears throat> is start building all of our components and our resources that make up our app service, our app service plan and our application insights, so the place where all of our, our monitoring, logging, app insights data is going to be saved. And like I said, we can save the inputs 
uh, all the information here that we provided into a template. And then essentially we can use uh, scripting methodologies, the, um, the API, uh, or we can use the Azure CLI to deploy this. So we've already got it all codified for the future. And as you saw, our deployment is finished. So we can just click on the bell and go to go to resource. And so our app is uh, up. And when we go to the default website right now, you'll see we've just got a node, <clears throat> a basic quick start area. We have some instructions. And then we have the deployment center. So we're going to go to the deployment center. And to do that, we're just going to go back here. We're going to click deployment center right here on the left side. And so we've got these different options of where our source control is going to be. So we could do this in Azure repos, which are free uh, and they are part of Azure DevOps. Uh, we can use GitHub and GitHub will allow you to just grab your repo right from it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab, grab the repo so I can just grab the code that we're working with right here. And then when I make changes to that code, it'll be reflected in my pipeline. But we got to make a few changes to our pipeline before we go to production. We'll get there. So we're going to go to continue. And then we're going to pick the way we're going to build it. I'm going to pick Azure Pipelines. Azure Pipelines is going to set up our entire CI and CD process within Azure DevOps. So I'm not going to have to manually configure any YAML. I'm just going to go in and allow the, uh, the deployment center to create it for me. So I'm going to click continue. So now uh, we'll go, we'll pick my user, uh, and that's my organization in GitHub. We'll pick the repository, and in this case, it's React Clock Basic. If you uh, fork it into your repo, you should see the same kind of uh, situation once you connect your GitHub to Azure. Um, you'll do that in the de deployment center. You'll see there's a quick hook to do that. So now we, uh, we're gonna work with the build environment where we're actually gonna build everything and, and what it's gonna run with. So I'm gonna build a new organization for Azure DevOps. We're gonna call it uh, JClock. It'll make sure it's available. We'll pick where our metadata and our build and all that's gonna be stored. In this case, we'll just use Central US. We're gonna use the Node 12 LTS long-term support version we're gonna pick our, uh, our task runner, I'm gonna use grunt, and then my startup command is just gonna be npm start. Fair enough, right? So now we'll continue, and now what it's doing is gonna tell us where our source control is, our build provider, all the information associated with, and then we're gonna click. So click. Azure DevOps has uh, been configured by the deployment center. As you can see, we were able to create a build pipeline and a release pipeline. I'll show you those in a second. We used the source version from GitHub to create a build, and that build eventually created release one. So here was a, just a, a quick version, uh, a way to look at our, our triggers. Source version one triggered a new build that then triggered a release. Let's look it through the process step by step. So let's look at the build pipeline. As you can see, when you commit something to GitHub, it's going to start by trigger to uh, run the continuous integration process. So let's take a look at the actual pump uh, pipeline itself. So if we click edit right up on the upper right hand corner, what will happen here is we'll see the pipeline that the deployment center configured. So it gets the source from GitHub, it runs an agent, that then tells it, create uh, a node uh, version of 12 for our install, then run the npm install, archive the file that uh, is eventually created into a zip file, and then that zip file is created into an artifact. That artifact is copied and then eventually published to where it's going to be uh, deployed. So if we go back here, that's our build pipeline that's what happened during our build after we committed. Then what happened is we had a release. So if we click release one, we'll see right here what happens is that this pipeline is eventually triggered for config, uh, continuous deployment because our drop was now in there. So we completed a build and our drop was created, which triggered a deployment. 
So our deployment is to production. And you can see the process is to initialize the job. We've got our logs of everything that's happened. That's especially important during the build process. We've got our download artifact. So uh, we can see that the zip is created. Eventually, we deploy it to Azure App Service. So it unzips everything. It runs the application. We can see it running it right here. And, uh, and then eventually, it finalizes the job. It sends a note to Azure DevOps that I'm complete. And what can we do? Let's go over back to our application. We'll go to Overview. And we'll click on the URL. And there's our clock. It's working. Now let's break it. Why do we want to break it? Well, simply stated, we're breaking it because I want to show you that if you make a mistake, you can eventually fix it and have an automatic uh, trigger to rebuild everything. So we're going to build a broken version and then we're going to build correct it. So <clears throat> we're here in our repository. And I'm going to do it all in uh, the web version. If you want to do this in your standard Git in your CLI, it's fine with me. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the source directory. <clears throat> we're going to go into components. And here in component is app.js. And uh, what this is mostly just the, uh, the start of our page, the header information, the title. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break a little bit of code right here. So I hit the pencil and now I'm in edit mode. And I'm just gonna take away uh, one of the quotes. That's gonna break this code. Uh, so I'm gonna commit it to uh, a new branch. And what'll happen is that if we do this, J branch new broken, broke intentionally, it would save it to a new branch but I don't want to save it to a new branch. I want to commit right to master because this is a demo app. And to be honest with you, it's okay. So we're going to commit directly to the brand, uh, the master. So master, I'll just take break app.js for demo. Broke intentionally, we'll commit the changes. So typically if you're in a collaborative coding stamp, uh, situation, you would have created a new branch the branch would go through Azure DevOps. Uh, and if you've created tests, the tests would either pass or fail. In this case, I don't have any tests created right now, but I intentionally broke my code. And so what's gonna actually happen, it's gonna start a new pipeline trigger. So here's our CI, as you can see just now, it started. It's gonna run, it's gonna run completely. It's gonna be fine. Even though I've got broken code in it, it's going to run because there's no tests. I haven't done anything to create tests that'll say, do this to ensure our application works. I haven't done that right now. And that's because it's a demo app and I just wanted to intentionally show you what happens when bad code goes through with no tests. So we're going to let this all go through the build process. We're going to let it finish. And when it finishes, I'm going to show you what happens when broken code so we're gets back. deployed. I broke something. Uh, and I broke it intentionally. So let's see what happened. So it ran through the run pipe, uh, the, ran through the build pipeline and it passed. And the reason why it passed is even though I put broken code into it, um, it never bothered to uh, test it because I haven't put any tests yet. So cool, it got past our build and our integration. What happens when it goes to release? So let's go to releases. And we'll see release two shows it was broken. It never went to prod. Let's take a look why. So it tried to deploy to Azure App Store. So it grabbed the artifact. That was the completed build from our, our CI process. Then it went to the deploy. And as you can see, it tried to unzip it. It grabbed all the important portions. And then it tried to do an NPM start. And then what happened in our NPM start? It found an error right here in app.js for the title React Clock, where I removed that piece of uh, uh, that one little quote, which is essentially what broke our code. So what happens when someone breaks your code in Azure DevOps? Well, the cool thing is we can just go back to the repository and fix it. So let's say we did have a test. And our test showed that when I applied, uh, when I made this change and I deployed it, 
that uh, I, I had broken code. And so in the process, we could have caught that during our test earlier on. So I'm gonna re-add that. I'm going to commit it back. So fixing broken code, fixed, fixing. We'll commit it right back to the master. Great. And so now let's go back to Azure DevOps. We've got our broken uh, one here. We don't need to pay attention to it anymore because if we go back over to our pipelines, we can see our CI one just started right now based on the trigger. So when you commit to uh, a GitHub repo, which is anytime we commit to master is the way our pipeline is configured it'll start building it. And then once that build is complete, it'll deploy it. So let's get through our build. And once we get through our build, we'll show you the deployment. And then we'll look at uh, app services and any other things that we can do to get ready to go to deployment. Sound good? We'll be right back. All our releases being completed, I wanted to show you something that you can use in order to troubleshoot some of your issues. Um, so if you go here into the uh, main app service and you scroll all the way down, there is this section right here called log stream. You need to have logging enabled uh, in order to use it. If you click log stream, it gives you almost like um, in Unix a tail. Uh, and you can use that tail to go ahead and view what's going on on the uh, actual uh, deployed server that we're working with. So you can see here's everything uh, since my deployment has happened. And what we can do is go over back to the release section. So here's our broken release two. Let's go to CD and we can see that release three is currently deploying. So we'll go to release three. We'll see it's in progress. Um, and what it'll do is go through the process of initializing the job, dropping the uh, archive or the artifact, decompress the archive, and make sure our app runs. And see, this time we didn't have any broken code. Our application starts, and um, the next task is to actually finish up and deploy it. So when we go here, this is when it was broken. Here's when it's fixed. Well, our deployment is done, our clock works. What's next? Well, there's a lot of other things that we can do with app service. Um, we can add custom domains, we can manage our backups, we can configure identity for specific role users. Um, if we wanted to, we can use MySQL in-app and use a low-end version of MySQL. So if we wanted to do something like WordPress, we wouldn't have to do an entire uh, SQL installation if we wanted to just store data in there. Um, there's so many things that we can do with this. We can configure security, um, you name it. So we accomplished a lot today, huh? We went ahead and we created a continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline thanks to the deployment center right in the app service for web apps in Azure. Um, if you have any other questions, if you need more information, check out the docs, check out the learn modules, Look at all the information I've got in the links below, um, and I think you're going to find uh, so much more to learn from. So thanks a lot. My name is Jay Gordon. You can find me on Twitter, at Jay Destro. I'll see you next time.